Yo, what's going on, Surfer Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with something I developed the other week. I was thinking to myself, what would it be like to have an aquarium that continuously spills over into a bog system that filters the tank above? Something like this. In theory, it should work. To make it happen, I'll use primarily scrap materials. With a wacky design like this, I really had to consider the thickness of glass. I'll use 3 8 inch thick pieces for most of the elements, which is quite thick for a tank of this size. I cut the pieces down as I've shown plenty of times before. I put down a straight edge, scored a line with the glass cutting tool, and broke the pieces on the edge of my workbench. The same thing can be done with mirrors. I decided to use one for the front of the bottom tank. I also sanded down the edges so they're safe to handle and rinsed them to remove debris. To get this tank plumbed, it made sense to include a bulkhead. I marked for it on the glass and taped down a guide. I filled it up with water and drilled away with a diamond tip tool saw. The bulkhead itself was a little too long. I cut it to a shorter length. Let's get the pieces assembled. I taped along the edges for clean beads of silicone. I applied it to the appropriate spots and secured them with tape. Then I applied it to the inside. I smoothed it out with my finger and removed the masking tape. I repeated this process for the bottom tank. I let the silicone cure overnight. What I ended up with are these tanks. The small one, which holds roughly 5 gallons, was made to fit inside the other tank. It will be lifted up and used as the overflow. To get that effect, we need a few other components. To get the water flowing, I'll use a small fountain pump. My idea will only work properly with the check valve. I modified one so that it fits into the pump. I'll also use a barbed fitting to tie into the bulkhead. I modified this piece as well. I connected it all together with a vinyl tube. Then I put this in the tank and measured to the top of the piece. I used these measurements to cut out additional pieces of glass which I processed like before. I marked for them inside the tank. I turned it upside down and applied silicone accordingly. I attached them together just like the aquariums before. Back to the plumbing. I added a small hose clamp to both sides of the tube to ensure the pieces don't leak. I also added plumber's tape to the side that attaches to the bulkhead. I screwed it in place. I went on to mark for the top components on the bottom. Then I put the pump in place and checked the alignment of everything. It looked good so I locked it together with silicone. Once it's set up, I placed it on top of neoprene. I cut along the edges so they match up. This will act as a self-leveling mat. Now it's finally ready for a test run. I started with the top tank to ensure the check valve worked properly. Without it, the tank could drain out during a power outage or due to equipment failure. It worked as intended, so I filled up the bottom compartment and let it rip. Unfortunately, it didn't work how I anticipated. Irregularities caused the spillover effect to occur only in a few spots. I changed my vision and attempted to cut the side pieces to account for errors. I was able to successfully cut one, but I ruined the other. So I had to take apart the top portion and start over with new pieces. This time around, I checked everything with a level to get the best overflow effect. I also cut the side pieces so they're slightly shorter than the front and back. As such, the water will only overflow from these areas. Originally, I intended for it to happen on all four sides, but as I developed the idea, it made sense to isolate it to the left and right. 
I also decided to cover up the middle section with black corrugated plastic. Makes for a cleaner look. Now for another test run. This time was certainly better than before, but it still wasn't perfect. I noticed that the water was creating a huge meniscus and only spilled over slightly. I assume this occurred because the pump isn't filling up the tank quick enough. I didn't want to change the pump, so I decided to include a piece of glass that forces the water to spill over as intended. Here's an example of how it will work. To keep consistent spacing, I built up a few pieces of tape. Then I siliconed and taped the glass in place. After the silicone cured, I gave it another test run. As they say, the third time's a charm. This is exactly what I envisioned it to look like. It took a while to get it right, but I love the result. I finalized the tank by adding frost film to the back. This really brought the aesthetic full circle. Since it's a custom built tank, it made sense to add a decal as well. Here's the result. I don't know about you, but I think it has a really cool modern vibe to it. Let's bring it to life. I started by encasing the pump with filter foam. This will keep debris out of the intake. For the plant substrate, I mixed up seachem fluorite black and fluval stratum. As usual, I rinsed them off to remove loose debris. Prior to adding it to the tank, I covered the bulkhead with a piece of fine window screen. This material will keep debris out without hindering the flow of water. I concealed it with a thin layer of substrate. I think it makes sense to keep this scape simple. In line with that, I'm using a single piece of Malaysian driftwood for the key element. For the rest of the scape, I'll use round river stones of various sizes. I fit a few larger ones around the wood to get the base layout. I poured more substrate behind the scape to build height. I added more in the front as well. I slipped it up toward the back to create depth. Then I filled in the front with white sand. I capped off the planting substrate with pea pebbles. I sprinkled in sand to soften the transition. Let's add the plants. My selection isn't ideal, but I can make do. First up are several Cryptocoryne Wenti Bronze. This is a pretty large plant in comparison to the tank size, so it will work perfect as a background plant. I used a Cryptolutea on the left side. For the mid to foreground, I used Crypt Undulata. I also put a Crypt Spiralis in the back right. To create textural contrast, I included a Hydrocaudal Tripartita Japan. That will do it until we fill it up. Until then I sprayed it down so the plants don't dry out. Moving on to the bog filter. I filled the compartment primarily with Lika. These are a great growing medium for plants, while also doubling as a nice surface for beneficial bacteria. As for the plants, I'll keep it simple once more. I put in a chorus Graminius aborazuki in each corner. I decided to top it off with substrate to make the inclusion of Hemigraphus ponda easier. That should do it. Let's get it filled up. As usual, I added my dechlorinator prior, and I'm using regular old tap water. Once the top tank was full, I added the remaining plants including Rotala indica, Kabamba caroliniana, and Suswasser tong. I went back and added a few accent stones. 
To finalize the design, I put java moss under the flowing water. I situated a piece of geotextile fabric first to give the moss something to hold on to. The combination of these will mitigate splashing water. There you have it, the Upflow Overflow Infinity Bog Filtered Aquascape. The idea here is that the water is always overflowing and being filtered by the plants in the bottom tray in a continuous loop. Of course that's happening from the plants in the tank as well. As for livestock, I decided to go with a colony of yellow Neocaridina shrimp. I added some Fritz Turbo Start to the system so I could immediately add the shrimp. This was provided by Fritz with a paid promotion. I think the concept is pretty cool and I like how it turned out. That said, I would consider this to be somewhat of a prototype. I might run with the idea for a future build and dial it into perfection. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I really hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new. Until next time, Surplus Squad, take care and peace.